Hey guys, and welcome to the Perfokers Podcast, where we talk about things you probably should too. And today I am joined by my co-host. I'm John, also known as Demon Siemens. And I'm Ethan, otherwise known as Flabs XE Gaming and a couple of other things, as well as YouTube. Yep, you can find those guys over there. And uh, I think before we get started, Ethan, you got some headlines. You you don't want to promote yourself? Who are you? We, we don't know. Who is this random guy on this podcast right now? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the host. I am Noah Dog, or just Noah. Yeah, there I'm you go. On this box. We Some didn't know who you coming. were for a second there. Like we, we like you just kind of ran into yeah. this Discord server. We just didn't know who you were. I, I have like, yeah, memory right. loss. I have to be reminded who my friends are. <laughs> <laughs> what the past fifteen minutes you've forgotten? Yeah, it's a real, yeah, real problem. <laughs> I expect this from you, John. <laughs> you, just because he's bald, he has memory loss. That's the equation that we got to go to. I mean, hey, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, the, out of this... everything that makes sense, it's that. <laughs> yeah, for John, it makes sense. Yeah, you know when the when if you don't, guys, I'm sorry if you're listening to this and you don't have hair. I'm sorry, you just have you. You're automatically we're diagnosing you with memory <laughs> loss. Not yeah. no doc. We're not doctors, by the way, but we're diagnosing you anyway. John said this his words, not ours. I didn't good. say that. You said that. <laughs> oh shit! Fuck. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the podcast. Um, Ethan, I believe you have headlines, right? Yeah, I'll do one this time, uh, and I'll do two. Like I'll do two next time, just because. Remember, guys, these are pre-recorded. The past uh, two have been, um, and the next one for you guys will also be pre-recorded. Because me and John, at this point, by the time this one goes out, we're probably already moving and like getting started to settle in hopefully um so yeah at the, at, but by, by the time you're listening to this whatever week this comes out uh you we're probably already in the midst of it so we can't be here to record on sundays uh those couple of weeks there so we don't want to worry about it um but yeah so i'll do one uh youtube has changed their policies so that new creators can get to the partner program much easier um you need 500 subscribers um 3, watch hours which i think that used to be 4, and then you need to consistently upload uh, and or have 3 million uh, views from shorts. So now this doesn't unlock every feature. They now have like two kind of tiers. So this this is the easier tier. to get, This is the first tier you're probably going to get to, um, which will unlock like memberships. It will unlock shopping. So like if you have a merch store or whatever, it will unlock um, a couple other things. I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's some things that it doesn't unlock. So it's just like a it's like an entry pass. Well, you're part of the YouTube Partner Program. And then the second tier, the normal tier that everyone at this, on, at this point has been has reached, uh, if, you're, if you're in the partner program, which is you need 1,000 subscribers, uh, 4,000 hours of watch time, uh, and then you needed something else. I can't remember. No subscribers, watch time. There's four things. You need to, you need to have, not have any strikes, obviously. And then there's a, th- a fourth thing that I can't remember now. Um, and uh, that will unlock monetization. So you can turn on ads for YouTube. You can turn on like banners. You can turn on like all these kind of stuff. Um, so that will, that mainly unlocks the revenue side of it. So, which makes sense. I don't think, I mean, with 500 subscribers, you wouldn't really be making much money anyway, unfortunately, just because of how YouTube works. Um, cause I, I have 7,000 right now and I'm making like a dollar, <laughs> so it's not enough to pay out. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I think it's a cool chance cause it allows people to get to have access to some stuff a lot easier. So if you wanted to do memberships early on, you could, all you need is 500 subs and everything I mentioned before. Um, if you want monetization, you still got to reach the 1,000 subs and everything I mentioned after that. Uh, but it's it's pretty cool. I think YouTube's making some decent changes now. If they keep making decent changes with their streaming, I think not really anyone's going to be able to compete at this point. Um, again, I've heard that Kick's good, but I Kick sounds too good to be true. I haven't looked into it, but to me, it just sounds too good to be true. Like there's like there's like barely any rules, like like all that kind of stuff. But I've seen situations where there's places that have no rules and everyone's civil and civilized and all that stuff. Don't know how that works, but I guess if there's no rules to break, there can't be bad people to break them, I guess. I don't know how that works. But either way, either way, YouTube, I think you're making good decisions. Keep making good decisions. I focus on streaming now at this point because Twitch is shooting themselves in the foot. So I would say put all your gung-ho on that and then uh, just get better at that stuff. Because I, I haven't used it, but I've heard that it's not that good. So. Right. Well, that's always good news for the people just starting YouTube. 
And it could actually boost you soon if you get all those. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah, trying to make my way towards uh the partnership program, so like I don't even have those requirements, but those making it easier makes it much seem like a more attainable goal than like ten thousand not ten thousand, a thousand subscribers. Moving it down to also the, too that thing. like for newer creators it's a milestone that you reach. So instead of trying to reach a thousand, which is really hard, uh, instead you get to five hundred. You're like, oh sweet, next milestone is only five hundred away. I just need to do that again. Whereas a thousand is much more daunting because it's like it's a thousand. You you're, you're mm. going from zero to a thousand. Whereas now you're going from zero to five hundred and then five hundred to a thousand. So I think it's actually a decent change. Right. Yeah. I think if YouTube keeps up with what they're doing, especially for the streaming. They'll probably be very dominant when it comes to everything now. <laughs> anyway, having said that, uh, this is where we would get some small talk in. So, how the past two days been for you guys? Yeah, uh, past two days. Well, I act I just mentioned this to Noah while we were while John was testing the audio and stuff. Um, so I mentioned that uh, last episode or two episodes ago, whatever it was, that I had a Fiverr order that was like uh, it was a hundred dollar order because they wanted five thousand words, which my highest package was one thousand five hundred for like thirty or something. Um, but they wanted five thousand, and initially I'm like, that's crazy, <laughs> like because I mean five thousand sounded crazy to me at the time. But then I looked back onto onto some of my book chapters to try and compare it, and one of my shortest chapters was like seven thousand. So I'm like, oh, five thousand should be nothing. Uh, and it actually did turn out to not really be too much. Uh, it was actually, it took me about like a couple hours or so, and that was really it. Uh, well, to write it, not to finalize it. Um, and so I ended up, we completed the order at this point, and the person that uh, is that ordered from me last time, we're talking about doing multiple uh, multiple orders at this point, like down in the future, because we were, I was talking with her, and she was like, oh, yeah, I have multiple jobs for you and stuff like that. Um, and it looks like they're all going to be a hundred dollars. So 10 more of the, or nine more of those. And I'm up to a thousand just from Fiverr, which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, it'll probably most, I'll probably invest some of it. Cause I'm going to start investing at this point. Cause it's, I, it, I think 18 and 19 is a good point, a good way to start. Um, but most of it will probably go back into the YouTube channel, either from games or from equipment or from like all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you guys need any service when it comes to writing, when it comes to like short stories, uh like script writing uh poetry especially i'm really good at poetry um and like i might do a fourth one later that's not nothing all oh, the three i just said are the main three i have right now um but i might do a fourth one later down the line when it comes to like professional uh writing when it like think of like resumes cover letters like that kind of stuff because I'm, I'm pretty good at doing those too but uh if you need any anything of the three i just mentioned then head on over to fiverr and check out my gigs uh the, if you can't find me just go to my channel there should be a link on the banner on my channel because sometimes Fiverr, if you type in the name, it doesn't give it to you. But if you type in the, the thing you're looking for, it does. It's the search feature is a little strange. Um, but if you want to just get a fast track to it, just go on over to my channel, go to the banner and there'll be a little Fiverr icon um, to click it. So, yeah. Cool. All right. And uh, John, with your boring ball ass, do you have anything? All right. Wow. Noah, I don't, I don't appreciate your attitude. I'll have to come over there and make you bald too. Negative <laughs> fifteen points. All right, oh. give him that. Give him to me. I want him. Oh no, it's the new way. Yes, keep going. Wait, was that was that weird? Was that? Was, I think no, it was, that was weird. weird. Yeah, it was weird because he's like, give him to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I need to listen to their stuff again. <laughs> I have, I, I just don't have the. T I mean, I would have the time if I did it while I was doing stuff. But if I'm listening to people talk and if I'm writing, especially. I can't write that fast because if mm. I'm listening to people talk and I'm talking in my head about what I'm writing, then it gets clustered and I don't like it. Right. So it needs to be during like when I'm eating or if I'm just doing something, it's very rare if I'm not writing something. Oh, I guess editing, I guess I could do, but even mm. still I need to listen to the actual thing. I'm yeah. editing, so. For me with, uh, with editing, I can't really listen to other things. I've tried like listening to music and like this just gets in my way and I, I don't like listening to other things. But when I'm playing games like on my own, I'll listen to Distractable or other stuff. All right. That's just the thing with me too. Uh, sometimes when 
I just have something like my book to write. I throw it on and I can actually work with it. And it's actually not too bad to listen to. Plus, get a chance to hear Wade do whatever Wade does on that podcast. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe what Wade does. It's interesting. Wade, Wade is his own specimen. He's just Wade. Yeah. yeah. I, I like him, but he's different. Anyway, you're going away from that. I have not had shit happen, so we're just going to dive right into the topic. Wow, he's giving me shit for having a boring life, but you said <laughs> you have nothing going on. <laughs> I work. I did work for two days. Nothing really interesting ever happened. Yeah, sounds boring. So, yeah, so why do you work there then? Because it pays well. Can't believe this. Well, so, so does NASA, but are you working there? No. Oh, see, yeah. there you go. They just go work at NASA. I don't have anything required to work at NASA except that maybe a high school like diploma. And that's it. Well, technically speaking, most uh, like because I specifically go to like uh, Elon Musk's space program or whatever because he he's talked openly that he hates everything involving college. So like he wouldn't. I don't know if he requires that kind of stuff. He he will probably require a certain IQ. And he would probably require uh, communication skills and like stressful situations skills and stuff like that. But I don't see him his like space program specifically trying to be like, oh, you didn't have a degree in space engineering for twenty years. You're not you're not even twenty thousand dollars in debt yet. So I don't think that's how it yeah. works. I don't think so either. All right, uh, I think now we can get into the topic, which is. We're basically going today to be psychoanalyzing some of our favorite characters from our game. Well, from the games we've played. Specifically yeah. games? That, that name is a damn so. Yeah, well, that uh, is like the only fucking game you play, though. You know what? I'll, I'll beat you up. I'll do it. <laughs> is that a threat? Come at me, bald man. <laughs> Come at me, bald <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Come at me. Just because you're bald means I can't lose. Feel like that makes sense? It does. Well, I, no, but no, you gotta make sure you're wearing sunscreen, otherwise you're just gonna explode. So, right, right, that. right. I also yeah. gotta make sure I don't go bl blind from the shining. <laughs> the shining, the movie. Yeah, he's gonna bring it and throw it at you. <laughs> I'll force you to watch. No, the I mean shining the shining that'd be coming off his bald ass head while I fight him. Yeah, I know what you meant. It was just funny that you said the shining. <laughs> Yes, I will yeah, force sure. you to watch The Shining on repeat. That's how I feel. Yeah, on repeat. <laughs> God, that is torture. All Shining right, so was okay, can... like when as a like a first time watch, and then mm -hmm. anything after that, it's like, all right, I'm done with it. Yeah. From what I hear, the book is better, but I haven't I haven't gotten into it yet. Books are books are usually better. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So before we get into the topic, John has negative sixty points. Ethan oh, with zero. What? What in the world? Real underdog Negative story six. here. Yeah, it's for real. Yeah, so um, just to clear up the the actual topic and stuff. So yeah, like what Noah said, we're gonna be psychoanalyzing uh the personalities of the characters and stuff. So we're gonna be like, there's a lot of thought. Depending on the character you choose, a lot of thought would probably be going into them, and mm -hmm. it's uh pretty interesting to apply it to like real life. Uh, people and maybe even the creators themselves because they sometimes creators draw inspiration from their own personality and put it into a character in their game mm -hmm. um and uh as a game uh, as an upcoming game designer myself i like to think of uh, i think it's a cool idea to add in some personality traits of yourself into not necessarily the hero because you don't want to see think of yourself as a hero because then right. you're then your story is going to get all wonky but it just like seed out a little bit of person of your personality into multiple characters and then you have all these characters as long as you keep them maintained, like really fleshed out and really have like good personalities and all that kind of good stuff. So, mm. yeah. <clears throat> and today, that's what we aim to do. Cool. So, John. What? What? No, no, <laughs> not me, friends. I'm the least prepared for this. Um, John. <laughs> that's why you're going first. John, what? you're not going first. I am. Well, you... Shut the fuck up. You know what? 
Dude, get take away some points already, all right? <laughs> all right, John, starting with negative 90 points. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, you really got to... Uh... I don't know what you could possibly do at this point. Trying to go for um, a world record of uh, yeah, negative yeah. points. Well, I feel like Noah still holds it because wasn't it, didn't he have like negative a thousand at some point? Probably. Oh, if he keeps pushing, he'll get there. Yeah, uh, let's go. Did I hear some more points being taken away? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. John, just for the creepiness, negative five hundred. Oh my yeah. god. Just like this episode will just be called John Loses Points. <laughs> That's how this episode will be called. Uh, Alright, so uh, I guess we'll we'll start this up. Um one of my personal favorite characters from any game happened well from GTA five happens to be uh Trevor Phillips. And I like him. Because he is wild, yet in a sense he is more free than if he were to say Franklin. But he's also a bit crazy, which makes him a bit more hostile than anything else. But overall, he's a character that's very interesting at times, especially if you've seen some of the load screens or load scenes that you've come into on GTA. And I even think the voice actor that did the voice for Trevor did very well. It was um probably one of the best voices for a character I've heard in a while. But overall that character is just one that it kind of sticks with you. Mainly because I was 13 and I finished a game when I shouldn't have and I, and I had nightmares about this guy, but yeah, overall, pretty cool, cool, and the bit of a cycle. All right, and I, yeah, I was, I was gonna say that um, I watched a short recently where they, where they actually did actually decide where they kind of psychoanalyzed Trevor, mm -hmm. um, and it shows because he on the surface when you first meet him, he's like super aggressive, super hard, like super like hardened as well, um, and then there's there's you get scenes in the game. Uh, that like shows just how fragile he actually is, like how broken he actually is. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's very interesting because like when a character comes off as super aggressive, super hardened, super like sarcastic, uh, it's usually uh, th that's just how they are. But sometimes people just like Trevor are like broken inside and they, they go to that kind of stuff as outlets for their uh, emotions and stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, I would say that's a, that, I mean, that's a pretty good character to start off with. Yeah, for yeah. for Trevor definitely like I've played through the game and I've, I've I like to watch people play the game on uh, like speedruns and such. If you go into like some of his like the side stuff he can do and like the um, conversations you can have while doing hangouts with other characters, you can definitely see that he's not just like insane because he's insane and nothing else about it. It's like you you can tell that he's had a rough life before the points of the game. And there's like there's like reasonings that led him to become the person he was, rather than just he's just insane because it's fun to have an insane character. Yeah. Right. All right, um, guys, do you have one? I think Ethan, you might have one. John, the bald man, do you do you have one? Uh, yeah, I have, I have one in mind, but uh, Ethan can go first if you'd like. I'll go. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so a lot of games that I play have mute characters. And <clears throat> sometimes mute characters can even be more interesting than characters that don't speak because the like whatever reason they have for not speaking is whatever. But the the actions they cuz you know you've all heard the saying actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. So like seeing their actions across different things and how they do it and, and that kind of stuff um is really interesting to me. Um but one of the like one of like one of the famous mute characters is Master Chief, right? He's like pretty pretty box standard when it comes when you think of a mute character you think of him uh just because he doesn't typically say anything um and uh now now he's not the character i'm choosing but i'm just saying that's a, a good example of like a mute character like he could because master chief is cool and all but i don't if i were to psychoanalyze him i don't think uh there's really much i can do there like clearly in the future or in the past 
games, like he's like he lost Corton at one point, so like he's kind of upset about it. Um, but other than that, I don't really know what I would say for him. Um, but John knows this character I'm about to say, and that's Kratos from uh, God of War. Um, that dude, like, if you like, if you play, I haven't played uh, the second one yet, so I can't fully do it. So I can't fully psychoanalyze him yet. Um, but I've, I played the first one a little bit ago, and I played the first time I ever played it was like years ago, when like kind of when it sort of came out. And like, he's just such a cool character, and he again, same similar to Trevor, he's like hardened on the on the outside, but he's like clearly has some soft spots on the inside for certain things um and he's he i think he's pretty he's pretty interesting and the way they the way they do the game as well also kind of adds to uh him now i don't know about the the dude the little guy i forgot his name at this point um mm. i'm sure he might actually be even more interesting just based on because he's a kid at that point um so it's possible he might be a little bit more interesting but like even like seeing kratos like save that guy i, forget, I can't i can't John, what's his name atreus or Ar- atreus or what yeah atreus, atreus. yeah yeah, uh, for him, like, saving a trash just showing, like, how much he actually does care about him and, like, that kind of stuff is really interesting. Um, I'm sure he probably brings out more emotion, maybe even in the second one. Again, I haven't played it, so I can't fully say anything about it. Um, but, yeah, so it's, uh, I think I think Kratos is pretty good. I, I'm hoping I didn't steal John's because I know he plays God of War, so. You, uh, in fact, did steal mine, but I can <laughs> talk more about Kratos yeah, and then find something else to say. Well, yeah, yeah no, Kratos. I, I would uh, I would agree. He's a very interesting character. Very, like you, he's stoic. Doesn't doesn't he's not outspoken as much. Or is outspoken? What, what's what's it mean when they don't talk as much? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there is a word for it, but I can't think of it. Yeah, he he doesn't yeah. like like he he screams quite a lot uh, actually, but yeah. only in certain scenarios when he's like, angry. But yeah, his his. He, you, you see throughout the game as the first one and the second one especially like he's very intelligent he figures out puzzles as he's doing them like sometimes he has very little plans like this one point where you're trying to break something and he's like we're gonna drop something really heavy on it and he's like but how are you gonna turn it midair to get it to land it he's like i hope it does he, he doesn't say those exact words but he's like very like well Hopefully we're lucky. But it's like some, sometimes that's all you can do. True. He actually sort of reminds me of Captain America in the sense uh, where he's like, he doesn't really have a plan going into it, but he hopes that it's going to succeed no matter what. Like he will try everything in his power to make sure that it, it succeeds. Mm-hmm. Again, right. at, at least in the first game, I haven't played the second one, so I can't say anything about that. Right. And then obviously his relationship with his son is like really interesting. Probably my favorite part of the game is uh, the relationship they have, especially in the second one. Right. I he just annoyed me it. so much, so I didn't really care about that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would definitely say um, Kratos is a very good character. I love everything about him. Mm-hmm. He's very... He's very cool, and he does show that he does have weak points, and that if you have him in the right place, they could be used. Mm-hmm. But also, he's one of the characters. Well, he has a style that I like, and he's got the style of he only speaks when he needs to, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about him is just that detail. Because right. right. Like he puts more power into his words by choosing when to use them. Right. That's like why I didn't like Captain as America as much. He's very similar to Kratos. But he talks a little too much. I mean, if if, Cap, if if Captain America didn't if Captain America talked as little as Kratos does, if the Avengers would have bombed. Like oh. a lot of a lot of one liners and a lot of uh me- like memes and stuff are from Captain America. So I would one hundred percent disagree with that one. Yeah. But, but uh yeah. no, it's back to you anyway for characters. So who's your who's your next character? Uh, all right. My next character, I don't know if you guys will know this one, but my next character is Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah. And what I really like about Arthur is that he's always got some way of knowing what to do 
when sometimes he doesn't even actually have an idea of where to go or what to do. He always finds a way to get something done. And when he does, it's always a very cool way when he does it. He also shows that he can be very strong and hard. But if you play the game and do certain choices, it shows that he does have emotions under all that really tough exterior he has on the outside. And just the way they made him was perfect. Like, you couldn't ask for anything better. Because he, he, he was funny at times. He's very violent, a little arrogant sometimes, but very, very good character. Yeah, I haven't played that game. I saw like trailers for it and it looked interesting. And then I heard like a lot of people shit on it, so I just haven't really had the motivation. And also, if it's as if it's as big a game as like GTA was, I don't really feel like getting into something that big again. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, personally, I like, I've tried a little bit of Red Dead Redemption too, and I just I couldn't I I I couldn't get into it just because of how big the world is and how like I just wasn't that interested in it. But I I can see why some people would be really really interested in this game and its story. Yeah, yeah I will I will say I, I'm if the game is good good for the game, but it doesn't have a good first impression, and that's a lot of the people's complaints with the game. Is that like a lot of the people I read like were, they were reviewing the game because I wanted I like reviews that don't have spoilers they just kind of review the uh, the game and they move on. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one, a lot of the ones I was reading when I was getting into it was that it doesn't have a good first impression because it's very daunting at the beginning and it's just like there's a lot of themes in it. So that's kind of why I strayed away from it because I saw those reviews and I understand you know you know don't take everything you say at heart. But if a lot of people are saying it doesn't have a good first impression, then I'll probably believe that a little bit more than. Some random Joe Schmo saying, "Oh yeah, this game sucks ass. It really sucks. Don't buy it." Because everyone's gonna, there's always gonna be even Undertale has people that do that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I, I just never got into it either. Fair enough. All right, Ethan or John, you guys got one? I actually do have another one. I, I, now that we're getting into this, I actually have thought of a few different things. All right, let's hear them. All right. Well, um, so the next character that was is actually from one of my favorite video games of all time is Cole McGrath from Infamous. So he's like the main character of the first two games, and he is like his backstory is like he's he is kind of loosely thrown in there. It's not like hugely important to his character. A lot of his character is shaped by the choices you make in the game, which is kind of cool. Part of it is leads to the, the game's choices being just, do you want to be evil or good? But the evil and good choices, at least the good side, makes a lot of sense with the character they set up. Is He's very caring about others. He's like His girlfriend is a nurse, so I feel like if he didn't care about others and only cared about himself, that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But... Like, he, he goes to great lengths, at, at least on the good side, to help as many people as he can. He, and, like, especially in the second game, the second game's storylines are much more fleshed out. But even though he's, like, this very good character, he still has, like, you know, flaws. He's a bit of a dick to his friends sometimes. And he's a little arrogant, mainly because he has superpowers. But it, it just makes it, like, really interesting to play for me. Yeah, I personally haven't played that, but sounds like a cool one. Yeah, I've uh, I haven't played it either, but I've watched, I've tuned into a lot of infamous streams actually and unintentionally. I, there's just been times where I've seen John's thing pop up, and I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything, so why not? Um, a lot of the ones I've tuned into have been infamous streams. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so I, I haven't really paid. I really, I got to be honest, I really, I really don't care what game he's playing unless it's a game I have played. Um. Because that's like similar to how YouTube works. I don't really, I don't really, really watch for the game specifically. Um, so I didn't really kind of pay attention to the character itself. Um, but uh, it, the story seemed interesting. Like there was because isn't that the one where the big dude's coming at after, or you're trying to get to him or whatever? That's yeah, like the second that, that's the second one. So uh, yeah, so the story seemed interesting. I just haven't played. it. I've only seen snippets from John's streams. Mm 
Hmm. Right. Well, that sounds interesting. I will we'll have to check it out sometime and definitely see what you're seeing with this character. Uh, Ethan, you got one? Yeah, of course I do, man. Um, I'm going to use this before anyone else takes it. Um, and that is, ooh, do I want? Yeah, I'll go. I'm going to go with Ellie from Last of Us, one and two. Um, now the start of her journey essentially is that like she she finds out like she, obviously she knows she's immune and stuff, so it makes things a bit difficult. Um, but like as you go through the first game, it's like she's clearly scared and she kind she kind of doesn't like Joel too much. Um, and then as the as they go on their journey to bring her to the the thing um joel ends up like i said spoilers by the way if you haven't played the first one i mean if you haven't played the first one at this point i feel like it's kind of your own fault but spoilers anyway um joel will actually end up uh saving her because he doesn't like the thought of that she's gonna die um and so he's, he saves her and they the, he doesn't tell her and so at the, at the start of two and at the end of one she knows something's up um and at the end the second game you get you get kind of the, these flashback moments of the the two of them talking about it um and but anyway what happens in the second game really changes her and again spoilers uh in the second game uh you literally get to watch joel get beat up and die like beat like beat to death with a golf club if i remember correctly um and so it's just this gruesome thing that uh she just she just gets to witness because she's pinned down and she can't do anything about it um and she actually starts getting ptsd from it at, at the end of the game when you have when you're in the farm scene uh she gets uh a, a, like a kind of glimpse of it and she's like the the thing that i like about the storytelling is um in all of these glimpses of her like going back to that room where he died in um the door doesn't open and the interesting thing about that is is that the door not being opened is symbol is a symbol to the fact that she couldn't do anything in that situation so she's kind of mentally destroying herself because she thinks that she couldn't do anything in that situation, which arguably, yeah, she couldn't, but she's blaming herself for it because the door won't open. So the door is locked and shut and she's hearing Joel screaming. Obviously this is a, like a PTSD moment. So it's not actually happening again. Um, but it's like, he's screaming on the other side and she's trying to open the door relentlessly trying to bash it down and nothing's working. Um, and so once, I mean, once you witness something as gruesome as that, especially with someone that you liked, yeah, I mean, you're going to carry PTSD from that entire moment on. And again, if you haven't played the second game, the entire point of the second game is a revenge story. Ellie is going out, out of her way to try and uh, kill this person that attacked, that was the one that killed Joel. Um, and so this entire revenge story, she goes all the way to find this person. They kind of chase each other through different times. And uh, repeatedly, again, she keeps having to watch her friends and family die, essentially. Um, and so at the end of the game, do you kind of have like this brawl scene with the, like it's a final boss almost, um, with the person that killed Joel. And you kind of just, it's kind of just really gruesome and really just kind of uh, sad because they're, they're tearing each other to pieces and like they're biting each other. It's like if, it's, if it happened in real life, because they're not using swords, they're not using guns, they're not using anything. It's just fist-to-fist combat. And that's it. Meanwhile, the person that did kill Joel is just trying to get, I think, oh, uh, who was it? She was protecting someone and they needed her. Uh, they were trying to save him or whatever. Um, and she was just trying to save whoever she was trying to save. Um, but so Ellie at that point was so broken, she did not care about killing her. She like, there was no mercy in her mind at that point. She just wanted her to die like an eye for an eye. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting character uh, design for her because I think uh, yeah, like I said, if you would watch that, I feel like anyone would get PTSD from that. That's 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 such a tragic thing to just watch. Um, so I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna say about that one. Right. And I would agree, Ellie. And my opinion from both of the games is a very, very cool character. She is. She had she had it really rough in the first game, but the second game she has a the worst. So. It, it kind of gets worse before it gets better in a say because the, the first game is on a good note if i remember correctly because you know joel saves ellie takes her back to the place and then uh you know, the second game well ellie has loses joel and there's nothing she can do but she overcomes it and depending on how you play the game 
I believe you end up killing the person that killed Joel. It's it's been a little while. I haven't really. Oh no, you don't. You don't actually. And that's kind of the point. Um, right. she the person that killed Joel gets to a point where she's like on the ground and about to die. Um, and that's the that's the one moment where Ellie kind of realizes what she's done up to this point. And she she puts the knife down and just kind of lays in the water because you're you're essentially on a beach in the water so like they're they're like knee deep in water not knee deep no that's the ankle deep in water, um and so she kind of just lays in the water and just lets her get away, um so really the, the the one thing I will say is that in the Last of Us two, your entire mission like everything you've done up to that point was kind of negated so I would say the ending kind of sucked not that I would have wanted her to die but just kind of like you know she got up to this point. And realized, uh, like as soon as she was about to do the deed, that it wasn't worth it. And so, it, like, it, it, to me, it's, she could have realized that a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, in terms of the actual like emotional, uh, like design of her, yeah, I think she's she's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah personally, I've not played those games, so I can't really speak much on that. Of course, you have any uncultured ball bat. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that was a little uncultured. Is he is he losing points with that too? Because he's uncultured. Yes, because he has not played the last one. He <laughs> loses. How many points can I lose, John? How many points can I lose? How many points? <laughs> the the wheel of points losing. All right, we're going with big numbers tonight, John. Uh, big money. <laughs> oh god! Ten thousand. Ten thousand Oh, the record has been shattered. <laughs> you were making a slight comeback. It was small, but well, <laughs> yeah, it's gone now. It's attainable now. Just because you didn't play a video game, John, <laughs> yeah, you, get to, you get to suck on these ten thousand points. It's a little unfair, but you know, it is what it is. Ten thousand points to suck on. All right, go ahead. That's great. Of course, our negatives are not as good as you know the good ones. Say it. All right. Well, no, you got another character. Of course I, I do. I didn't go for my second one. Oh, did I? All oh, right, John. No, did, go. No, did you? No, did that... you, no, you said you said the infamous guy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, you win. Yeah, you it's not his turn. Yeah, you you got another ten thousand for confusing the fuck. Oh out of me. my god! <laughs> Negative twenty thousand just... points. Oh boy. <laughs> Right, so yes, I do. Um, my last character for this episode is um, Max from Life is Strange. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And I'm picking her because throughout the entire game, almost no matter what, except for one point in the game, she stays by. Um, I forget what the it was Max the protagonist or the best friend of the protagonist? What are you saying over there? You're mumbling. I can't hear, I can't hear what you're saying. I, I forget about it. Anyway, um, so if you remember in, in the game, uh, Max stays with one of her best friends throughout the entire game. But she also learns how to use her ability that she has recently just found, which, as we all know by now, should be traveling through time. Well, not through time, but basically just back in time. And throughout the entire game, she gets to see these decisions that she's made, and they can either be the good ones or the bad ones. And I think later in the game you could see the consequences of all your bad decisions and it's all that's like one big memory um but throughout the game she learns how to control it and even save or if you choose to destroy the town and it's very interesting because I would have never thought of a kind of player well, play style. Plus, I do love the way the game looks. The artwork on it never looks bad. And when you do the graphics, the graphics always have looked good. 
don't care what anyone says about that. But overall, Max is a very interesting character. Right. Yeah, it's it's been a while since I played the Life is Strange game. I only remember playing the first one, but like from what I remember, like Max is a very very loyal friend, which is pretty cool to see. Like they re- reunite with their like childhood friend, and then like from that point on, they're just there with them until the end of the game, and they like even the final choice is like testing their friendship because it's like you either save them or you save the town yeah and it is just very interesting to see uh what happens Mm. Uh, um i'm going to actually take it in a similar direction because i was actually going to think of max but since you took it i'm going to go i'm going to go the opposite way and say not chloe because i think she's kind of box standard a little bit um but i'm going to go with kate actually because the way that uh, it's Square Enix, right? The way Square Enix handled the depression in ep- specifically in episode two was amazing because it highlighted the way you do it. Well, Max, there, there's a couple things Max could have done better, but the way the way the whole scene worked out, and again, spoilers, um, is on the roof. You have no, all your powers are gone because the power or Max's powers don't work. It is literally up to your knowledge to to help her not do what she was going to do, right? So looking around for clues in a room, like that would have given you, have given you a lot of information, actually, in just that one scene. But uh, listening to her throughout the different types of things, uh, I believe it's episode one or two where you pick up her call. Um, if you choose to not do it, she brings it up and, like, it kind of acts as a thing to kind of help her go do what she's doing. Um, and so, like, all this different stuff, it is literally up to you to save her essentially and there it the way they do it is there's a there actually is a way to save her a lot of games that try and implement depression elements as you can't save them they just end up dying or they they do it off screen or something like that there's not usually a way to save them but in life is strange there is um which was really cool and just like i think everyone agreed like at least back then i don't know how it holds up now but as you first played the game like just that your your heart stops because you know that it could happen that way um and uh, the moment where you see uh, Max's hands touch Kate's hands and like see they pull her off of the roof was one of the best moments in the game for me because it was super, it was like really nice to see that you could actually save her. That was the big thing. Um, but Kate, like the problem with her was she like her fan, like parts of her family weren't great. Like I think it was her mom uh, that was like really, really hard on her because she came from a Christian household uh, clearly and she still believes in it. But like her mom, like is very hardcore into it um and so she would berate her and she would like send her these really mean letters and stuff like that uh which obviously didn't help at all um and a lot of the conversations you talk about is why max cares about her um and you kind of have to go through this little uh like little thing where you have to figure out well what what did she have like so if you go into the like sibling scene or whatever whatever the family one was about there was a picture on her wall or a a dresser wherever the hell it was that showcases with the family she has. Um, I think she didn't have brothers. There, I think there was one thing she didn't have, which was those. Um, and then the sisters, which was th- that was a correct answer. Her dad was a correct answer. And if you said to her mom, uh, it wouldn't have helped because her mom clearly didn't care about her as much. Um, but yeah, so she came from this kind of really harsh household environment into uh, Blackwell Academy. And then even in Blackwell, she got bullied all the time. So it's like all this kind of stuff just piled onto her which ultimately led to the climax of episode two, which was the roof scene. And I think they, they handled that scene really well. They handled Kate's emotions really well, because actually this is how it would, this is how it kind of works in real life. You'll notice halfway through when you're actually starting to convince her to come down, all of a sudden she snaps back and is like, no, you don't care about me. It's like, that's actually what kind of stuff happens. Like you, you start to get close to them and then all of a sudden their brain just like reverts back to its normal state. It's like, no, you don't care about me. And like that kind of stuff. And the way they handled it was really cool. So shout out to Square Enix. I haven't played the third game. Um, I've heard there's like uh, not the same elements in it, but I've heard that one's okay. I haven't heard too much about it. Uh, I've heard second one kind of sucked, <laughs> which I'm worried about because I'm playing the second one now. It hasn't been too bad. Um, but yeah, the first one I, I'm sure is probably going to be the best one. But the way they handled that scene specifically was so beautiful. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Kate throughout mm-hmm. that entire game is very unique 
character, in my opinion, just mm-hmm. because of the situation she has with her family, but also she's dealing with bullies at school, and yet she's still going and doing the best she can. But as we all come to know, that scene shows, and they did a really, really great job, in my opinion, of uh, showing how that could actually go, because I did both options, and let me tell you, when you accidentally fuck up and she goes, it, it's heart wrenching, and you know what's gonna happen, but it hurts. Mm-hmm. And it, it, they did a really good job, and overall, Kay was, in my opinion, probably one of the best characters from that game. Right. All right, John, I guess that's up to you. Yep. Um, so I guess for my next character, I'm going to go with Leon Kennedy from the Resident Evil series. S- specifically now, now that they've done the remake for 4, because, like, in the original 4, he was a pretty bland character if you didn't play 2, and they, I guess 2 they might have also had a bland character. I don't know, I never played the original. But, like, he was kind of bland. He he had a lot of, like, one-liners, so he was, like, kind of funny. But that's really all it was to him, other than he was the main character, and he saved the person in the end. And, like, it was, it was... That was kind of it. But then, like, when they remade the game, they put, like, more detail in his opening cutscene. So, like, by the time four, Resident Evil 4 happens, basically in Resident Evil 2, which is the first game he's in, is like there's a zombie apocalypse and he's just like he's just a random like rookie cop in that game and so he goes and has to deal with the um zombie apocalypse and help uh, help like a, the couple people that are left still alive and then like he gets out and is offered to be like a, a agent for the president of and like he has to go and do a bunch of missions where he is it's sort of forced upon him like that's not a thing in the original but in the remake it's like he says it's kind of forced upon him he really has no choice um and it adds like more to his character being that he is reluctantly doing this job but at least trying to be do the best job he can uh, to help the help the people he can that he's told to instead of just being like oh go and do this job, and then he does the job without any complaint or thought about it. And, obviously, like I said, he, he's very, he has a lot of one-liners, he's very funny. That's a, that keeps up between, like, all the games that I've seen him in. And, as well as in 4, the, the, the relationship he has with the person he's trying to save is, like, they're they don't really know each other, so, like, they don't trust him that much at the beginning. But then they, throughout the game, they start to get along better, and they, they work together very well, and it's a very, very interesting dynamic to see. So it's, this is this is more, like, say why I like the remake, but the, I think the addition of making Leon's character a little bit more interesting made the remake better, so I think it still applies to what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would agree. Um, I personally haven't played that game, but I have seen some playthroughs with in that game, and uh, Leon is a very interesting character. I haven't really done much analysis on him, but he does seem like a very interesting character. Mm. Yeah, I, I haven't played or seen any of the games, really, so can't say shit, <laughs> but... Yeah. There. All right. So, do you guys have any final characters before we end, or no? No, we got we got to end so we can, uh, because the last episode was one hour and nine minutes or something like that. All right. So, who wants to hear the points? I mean, I mean do we need to at this do point? We really need uh, to. I want to see how how much in the hole I am. Yeah. So yeah, give John his like whole points first. All right, John. With a calculation of, give me one second. All right, John, with a point score of negative 
420,000. Yeah. What in the world? That is, that is wow. crazy. And Ethan with 39. <laughs> He's like, well, and Ethan, you got 39. Good job. I, I mean, I feel like it'd been hilarious if you had just been like, even though I had all those negative points, you're like, you're one point behind Ethan. Oh, that would have been so mean. Uh, fuck. No, because then it wasn't. Because then I would have had to lose points, which didn't happen. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna win no matter what. So really, you were good. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm just curious, what what lost John the most points? Just curious. Everything. Okay. Just, okay. just yeah. start to finish everything. I, I thought you would be like, well, his bald head, or you know, I didn't like this character he talked about, or something like that. Uh, nope, his just, bald just head, his take on Resident Evil. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the name of that character he fucking talked about? Um. Oh, never mind. Um. Anyway, so. Ethan, you got a winner speech? Yeah, I mean, again, it's not really much of a win if John just, like, tanked uh, the entire time, but uh, I would say, in terms of, like, a lot, there's a lot of characters in video games that even we didn't go over today that are, like, really uh, really go in depth in terms of, like, the, the people that wrote them and the people that uh, made them, because, like I said, a lot of creators will put their own personal stuff into certain characters. So I would wonder, like, in some of the games that we uh, talked about today, uh, is there some element of uh, personality that's been embedded into these characters from their creators? Because I'd be interested to know that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. All right, and John, uh, yeah. since you basically broke the fucking um, scoreboard of losing, yeah. uh, you get no goddamn winners, not winner, uh, loser speech at all. Wow. Like and uh, thank you guys for listening. We hope we provoked a conversation and made you laugh along the way. You can find me on Xbox at no dog fifty four. You can find Ethan on YouTube at Flaps XC Gaming. He has shorts now, I believe. And you can find John on Twitch at Jeebens Jeebens. Leave the fucking platform. Any? I I didn't catch what you just said. John, leave the fucking platform, leave Twitch, it's going bad, man. I mean, if, if they retract their statement, it'll be back to normal. I mean, normal on this, normal as Twitch can get, but still. They still have, they haven't doubled down yet, but they're, they haven't said they're not doing it, so I don't know, it would depend. But, but like, you know, YouTube streaming's not that good, so until they fix that, I don't know where, where he would go just yet. Right. Anyway, you can also find John on YouTube at Jeebens Feebens. Have you fixed that fucking space correction? Um, no. It's, I don't think it really matters. Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, this guy. Anyway, so that's where you can find those guys. Uh, we also have a Patreon. I'm like to sit here and act like I know the perks or any of that shit because I do not. But I can say you can donate any amount you want. It could be one dollar, and you will get the perks for the perk for the tier. That would be you get perch five, pledge five, get the perks. It would be for I think what three dollars. Not really sure, but it goes up. Me and Ethan have me, Ethan, John have our own tiers. You can get those, or if you feel really generous, you can buy your way into our podcast. It's just basically, yeah. 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 I don't remember how much that one is, but if you ever feel like doing that, or if anyone has ever that generous, that option is there. Only two people can ever hold it, I think. Or yeah, it's two. Yeah, it's two people and it's a hundred. Um, that but like, because the the podcast, if we were to add another person at this point, we were risking being inconsistent. Because a lot of social media sites don't like inconsistencies, so. Yeah, it'd be uh, but you'd get to be on here, and you also get to choose the topic for the thing you're on. Um, we have to vet it, of course, but you'd get to pick it. So yeah, there's there's a couple things that come with that one, but yeah, it's a uh, you'd also get everything beneath that tier because 100 is the highest tier. So you'd get not only did we get to be on the podcast, but you would literally get every single tier perk uh, beneath that one. So right. 
And uh, with that, we will see you guys next time.